Gareth Roberts of the Anfield Rap joins us on the line. Liverpool are going to win the league, Gareth. Yeah, Liverpool are always going to win the league. Um, that, you know, if you're a football fan, you think your team are going to win things. It's a time of year when you know no games are being played. There's no points on the board, so you're there to dream. But I think we can back it up this time around. I mean, we got the third highest total of any Premier League team last season, 97 points in any ordinary season. That is enough to win the league. Um, and nothing tells me that you know this team is going to fall off a cliff. It will be there yet again. Uh, obviously, there's Man City there. Man City are a great side, a great manager. Um, but I, I obviously fancy Liverpool. I'm a Liverpool fan, and I can't wait for the season to start. What are your level, levels of concern? Because that's the big thing about the hangover from last season, the investment of energy that went into it in terms of the Champions League and obviously coming up short in the Premier League. What are your levels of concern about the hangover from that? I haven't got one. Um, the, no concern at all because we've been in two consecutive Champions Leagues. Uh, we've got 97 points, as I mentioned. And I just think confidence is through the roof. I don't think there's a hangover. I think these players mentally are in the right place. I think the manager consistently gets them mentally in the right place. And some of the stuff that's been said behind the scenes and big interviews that have been done in various places over the summer as well, you know, are really, really positive. You've seen the owners talk about Jürgen Klopp and say, this man could be a psychologist. This man could be a CEO of a major organisation if he wasn't involved in football. And I totally agree. I think we've got a, a brilliant leader at the helm and everyone at the club is right behind them, including all the players. You saw that. That's why we, we've got to two Champions League finals. That's why we've got to various other finals. He's just, he gets the most out of players. That's why players want to play for him. He's also showing a pathway for the kids. You know, you've got Rhea Re and Brewster coming through this season. And OK, we could have gone out and spent £80 million on a player but instead, he's trusting a player like Rian Brewster to come through. And what that does is not only spares him on, but in the future, when there's a, a promising player at Manchester United, Liverpool, Chelsea, Arsenal, Man City, etc., are all going for the same player, which happens all the time because there's no secrets. Liverpool can say, we can show you a pathway to the first team. Look what Rian Brewster's done. And I think that's what's going on. You know, Jürgen Klopp doesn't think, and his team, they don't just think about the season ahead. I think long term, you know, £50 million is being spent on a new training base to bring all the Liverpool teams together in one place to work together like a club should. And again, it makes a lot of sense. I understand why people get panicky and they want new faces and we all sort of live this lie that transfers are everything. But they're not. You know, cohesion and confidence is just as good as buying a new player. And Liverpool have got cohesion and confidence, so there's every reason for me to believe that Liverpool will be right at the top come the end of the season. You say Jurgen Klopp could be a psychologist there, and I think this is a very smart psychological move from Jurgen Klopp, the way he's spoken during a transfer window which hasn't really produced any big signings. He says that big teams stay together for a number of years, and we often yeah. wonder why is it exactly that players work that bit harder for Jurgen Klopp than most other managers, and perhaps it is that true belief that they believe that he believes in them, and like that is a really smart thing that if you can tap into that, that perhaps their strongest resource is the fact that the manager and players, that trust that they have with him one another is just so strong. Absolutely. I mean, you look at Div Origi and what he did last season and the fact that he was able to haul himself from nowhere to become, you know, such a vital cog in a machine that ends up with the European Cup. And that's brilliant psychologically because, you know, it must be really easy to sort of go through the motions and think it's not really for me this and at the end of the season I'm going to be off and I'm going to have to go somewhere else. Instead, you know, he's he, he's a star man against Barcelona. He's scoring in a final. He did what he did against Everton. He scores a crucial goal against Newcastle, etc. And you know, from the manager's perspective, if, if you're dealing with Divock Origi and you've got him to sign a new contract, which happened over the summer, if you then buy another forward and just knock him back, you know, he's back down the pecking order. What does that do to to Divock's mindset? But what it does to his mindset because he's stuck with him is that he'll, he'll, he'll achieve the most he can achieve in his football career because he believes in the manager, he thinks the manager believes in him, like you say, and that's what he's doing with his players. He, he's really careful about who he recruits. And while there's lots of hand-wringing about Liverpool's transfer business this summer, look at Liverpool's transfer business full stop under Jürgen Klopp. 
there is barely a good day and that is for a reason and that is because what they're doing is smart you may as well hang on to your money and buy a player that you're, you're sure about because we all know that any transfer any transfer at all is a gamble but Liverpool are trying to make it less of a gamble I mean you know down the years I can remember you know Rafa Benitez I love the man he brought us the European Cup but he would always sign players at any opportunity he, he had to sign them. And what he often did was buy his third or his fourth or his fifth choice player rather than the player he really wanted. The one that always stands out for me is, is Jermaine Pennant. Everyone knew he was trouble. Everyone knew what came with Jermaine Pennant. Rafa bought him anyway. And now and again he turned in a performance, but ultimately he failed. But everyone could see that coming. And um, what, what Jürgen, Michael Edwards and the rest of the team are doing right now is being much, much smarter about the money that they spend. And like I say, the record speaks for itself. Transfers is only one way of freshening up a squad. You can come up with a new mentality, a new style of play, whatever it may be. But do you expect Liverpool to pretty much stick to their guns in terms of what we saw last season? Yeah, I don't expect huge surprises in how they play and how they set up. I think what's important is sort of the will and the mindset that you saw from Liverpool last season because it wasn't always champagne football. It was more about that they believed in themselves, that they kept going, that they found a way to win so often. And even in the final, you know, you will have all watched it. And it wasn't it wasn't a classic. But, you know, you've you seen Trent Alexander talking this week about how, you know, the, 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 the final against Madrid in Kiev was a lesson because once they were ahead, they didn't let Liverpool off the ball. They, Liverpool couldn't really sort of get near it. And it was about controlling the game, not just always playing champagne football. And I think Liverpool under Klopp have developed into that side now. So you look at the start of last season, some of the games are frankly boring, but they just won them. Other times, you know, I, I think other fans were looking into our world and saying that looks a little bit lucky. But that's what we always used to say about Manchester United under Alex Ferguson. You know, yes, they would sweep sides away sometimes, but other times they would look fluky, they would look lucky, they would just find a way. But that's what the good sides do, and I think that's what Liverpool do now on the Jurgen Club. The only concern, obviously, is that you know they've been playing that style of football now for a couple of years, and like teams will have started to cotton onto it, and not bringing in a player a marquee signing that you can help build a team around, particularly in Liverpool's instance. I think people were talking about maybe freshening up that uh, that midfield, but. So, so it doesn't allow you to tweak up your system uh, around a new player. So that might be the one sort of uh, chink in the armour here. Yeah, maybe. I can understand why you would say that. But equally then, I think the counter-argument to that is you look at Naby Keita and say, we spent big money on him and he's not truly delivered on that fee yet. But what we've seen in pre-season is a man who looks determined to, to kick on. He looks bigger, he looks sharper, he's obviously been in the gym. He looks like a fella who knows what's required now to, to deal with the Premier League. It, it's a physical league and he looks ready to deal with the physical side of it. And he's shown in flashes that he's a fantastic player. We haven't seen the YouTube, the YouTube Leipzig player, if you like, too much at Liverpool so far. But if he can produce that in the Premier League, then all of a sudden we've got a real talent on our side. And, you, you, you know, you think about Alex, Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain returning also. I think you can get more out of Shaqiri as well. Brewster up front, as I mentioned earlier, is now ready to, to play in the first team too by the manager's own admission. And then you've got you've got um, Fabinho as well with a, with a season under his belt. And, you know, the latter end of last season, Fabinho was absolutely brilliant for Liverpool. And I expect that to continue to be the case. So while there are, are not new faces... I feel that there are, there are players there that can kick on and there are players that were injured last season that can contribute this season. Is it ultimately a two-horse race again for you? I think so, yeah. I, I, you know, I look at some of the business that was done there in the transfer window and some of it, to me, looked a little desperate. I think you look at the odds as well and really big odds for traditionally great clubs. You know, you've got Arsenal and Manchester United are huge odds to win the title. And I think ultimately, yeah, it comes down to Liverpool and Manchester City once more about who can win it. I think it's fair to say that Liverpool will probably need Manchester City to fall back a little bit in terms of points this season because matching 97 again this season is going to be a, a huge ask, even for a, a title-winning season. Like, Is there a tangible thing that you're looking at from City's perspective that you're like, right, that is where that diminishing return in terms of points will come from? I, th I think the loss of company is huge. To be honest, I think he, you know, he's, he was a talisman for City, wasn't he? And 
you know, you saw that Guardiola wanted a top centre half to come in and replace him, and, and in the race for Maguire, well, he ends up at Manchester United, and maybe that's a small chink in the arm. I mean, to be honest with you, look, they're a fantastic side, they've got a fantastic manager and a fantastic squad, and you're right in saying that whatever Liverpool do, they can't control, we can't control what they, what Manchester City do. So we've almost got to forget about them. You, the only control we've got is this: is the two games we play against them in the league, and we've got to try and win those. The rest is up to Manchester City and and everyone else. And if they if they turn out the phenomenal form that they were doing, certainly latter end of last season where they hardly put a foot wrong, then yeah, it, it might unfortunately mean Liverpool fall short once more. But I don't really think you can criticise Liverpool. You can't look at last season and 97 points and say Liverpool did anything wrong. For sure. In 12 months' time, it's interesting thinking about your thoughts and where Liverpool are going to be in terms of the stature of the club. Like We saw the, the big money list come out recently in terms of the richest sports franchises in the world, like you had Manchester United and Real Madrid up near the top. Like One of the storylines that people might have missed over the summer was Oli Dale leaving his role as commercial director with Liverpool or um, commercial manager, I'm not sure what his specific title was. Like You've got a new kit deal to be negotiated at the end of the season. In 12 months' time, do you expect Liverpool to have more of a strangle hold in their position as one of the biggest clubs in the world and perhaps usurping Manchester United as perhaps an undisputed giant of English football? I think that's difficult. I think you know Liverpool are getting better and better all the time at that and commercially you can't really sort of fault what's going on behind the scenes because it's been transformed by a group of businessmen that certainly know what they're doing in, in all that. Um, in terms of catching up to Manchester United, I feel like that Liverpool for a long time sort of felt that acting in a commercial manner wasn't for them. And and some of that was driven by the fans, let's be honest, because we, we, we sort of felt we were more of a football club not to have a mega store and not to do some of the things that Manchester United were doing. Obviously, when you look back now, uh, that that was the wrong decision. But at the time, a lot of the fans were like, well, we're, you know, we're better, we're purer and all this kind of thing. So Manchester United, for me, had a huge head start. They were able to build a bigger stadium than Liverpool also and Liverpool sort of fell asleep at the wheel a little bit and got left behind we're now playing catch up in those terms I'll be honest with you but you know it, it feels to me that we're getting there you know you used to you used to look at Liverpool I'll be honest in the past at times and say it feels like they're running like a corner shop uh, whereas you look at it now and, and, and every aspect of it commercially football wise the fact that there's a new training ground you know, everything seems to be pointing in the right direction. It really does. And there's a lot of talented people at the club now, not just football-wise, but business-wise as well. And for me, there's not too much to complain about. You know, it feels like the club's in a good place. Question in here on uh, Facebook from Dennis Cudahy. Gareth, asking you why they haven't, uh, Liverpool haven't extended James Milner's contract. I think he's a year to run. He's 33. Maybe that explains some of it. Yeah, um, he's thirty three, but also he, you know, he always smashes these fitness tests in the in the pre season. Uh, he does what you want, you know. He'll play where you want. He, he moaned a little bit, obviously, about playing at fullback. There's every chance, you know, if there's an injury that he finds himself there again this season. Uh, I'm sure he'll contribute. And to be honest with you, I, I, I don't really know the reason, and I, I fully expect him to get one at some point. I think he's probably one of the fifth players in the league. He said himself publicly that. You know, he's happy to sign, that he's expecting talks. And I'm sure it's on the list. I mean, there's other players there as well that you could make the same argument about. Like, why why haven't we tied down Joel Matip, given his performances last season? Because he's gone from a player that you may be expecting to slip out the door on a free to a player now that everyone wants to see signed up because he's been fantastic. So I'm sure it's on the list of, you know, things to be done. Uh, they've obviously been scarred on the, the transfer market fairly lately. They've been ready in the team for the new season. Uh, I expect as the season wears on that, James Milner will get another deal because he's been fantastic for Liverpool, not only in terms of being a, a great footballer, but also you know, in, in an almost captain role. You know, All the other players clearly like him. The fans like him as well. He's very much not boring. And uh, he, he deserves a new contract. They agree with the uh, with the person writing in there. Yeah, uh, one last one for me. The uh, one of the players that did come in was that young Harry Elliott from uh, following yeah. some interesting things to say after the Community Shield. Does that go down well with the um, with the fans? The Look, McDonald's it's one of them. Cup stuff. 
Yeah, I've seen it. Um, you know, th- th- this this seems to happen now with any sort of young sign and that, you know, someone somewhere will troll through, you know, social media history and, uh, and drag something out and then it's made into a big deal. Look, you know, he's a teenager and you've all been teenagers. I've been a teenager and if you didn't make a mistake in that time, well, good luck to, to you. You know, that's what the lad did. It gets blown up because he's at Liverpool and Liverpool are a high profile club. Look, it's a mistake. It's a mistake when it's blown up in, in public. He's apologised for it, and I, I think we move on. He's a kid. Um, I've made silly mistakes, like I say. I'm not going to discuss them with you here. Uh, I'm far away from being a teenager these days. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not too concerned about it. Look, it didn't look great, did it? We can all say that. Um, but he's apologised. We move on, and he looks a good footballer. And finally, swatting Norwich aside tonight, a must, obviously, a quick start for Liverpool to avoid that... Uh, possibility of a hangover I suppose yeah absolutely I mean you know we've been discussing it on the Anfield rap and I've been saying there that you know once upon a time you know you could maybe get away with a draw and, and you wouldn't be too bothered you would write it off as an early season and that kind of thing but the league's been transformed hasn't it the, the bar to win it is unbelievable now because of what, what Manchester City are doing so Liverpool have absolutely got to win. You, you know, we've got to get three points on the board. We're playing before everyone else as well, so we can get up everyone's noses that way. And yeah, it's um, it, it's a continuous sprint from sort of now until May, rather than the old cliche of it being a marathon. So yeah, Liverpool have got to start with a win. I fully expect them to. I think uh, Liverpool have started seasons well now for a number of years. I think the last time we were beaten on the first day was under Brendan Rodgers when we we lost the way to, to West Brom, which is about seven years ago now, I think. So, yeah, fully expect, you know, Anfield welcome and the European champions back. I think that will get everyone's blood up and uh, I think we'll have too much for Norris tonight. Good stuff, Gareth. Thanks, Millie, for taking the call. Cheers, boys. Gareth Roberts there of the Anfield wrap for the first time this season. I'm sure we'll be hearing much more from Gareth over the course of the season um, on Liverpool as they build that guaranteed title, as he's saying. I think it's going to be tough for them. I really do. Mm. I don't know. The more... <laughs> the more you listen to him, the more you were convinced. Yeah, he's, yeah he, he, he makes a compelling case. It's more, it's more to do with Manchester City, isn't it? Like I, 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 I don't fancy Liverpool getting 97 points at the end of the season, no. but I fancy Manchester City getting 98 points less. Then again, like I mean, it's uh, it's hard to know whether I'm being swept away by Liverpool's lack of summer signings or whether I'm being swept away, oh, away yeah. by the influence of someone like Vincent Company and what that'll do. Like you have to have a bit of a concern about Manchester City at the heart of their defence. Like with Laporte alongside John Stones, Vincent Company was brilliant at the end of last season. I, I don't think we can overstate that a little, any, any to any level whatsoever. So. I don't know, I would have concerns about that in terms of what they're going to concede. There's no question, though, that Manchester City are going to put up a massive yeah. goal to Sally once again. Yeah, and I think that some of the other teams might crunch up a little bit as well. I don't think there's going to be that gaping gap that there was to some of the other uh, other teams last season.